I'm Henrietta Four, Executive Director of UNICEF. All of us at UNICEF celebrate the determination of people who overcome barriers, who achieve great personal and professional goals, and who advocate for the rights in the fight against HIV. Mothers, we see this determination in your eyes as you access PMTCT to protect your children from HIV. Children, our hearts leap with joy as we see you healthy and we imagine a future for you that is not defined by HIV. And adolescents, we see this spirit in you as you support one another, not only through HIV, but through life. And providers, government officials, and advocates, we see this determination come alive in the actions you take and investments you make in children's futures. Over the past 40 years, we have seen one of the most extraordinary public health responses in history, and we've seen how innovations combined with political will and investment have made all the difference. So if we are to improve treatment access, we must also improve pediatric testing and identify innovations to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of diagnostic technologies. This technology offers the ability to rapidly diagnose HIV in infants. It can also measure HIV viral load, and it can detect the presence of TB or diagnose HPV, the cause of cervical cancer using a testing platform that is simple enough for providers to use at the point of care. Recently, these same testing platforms have been used for the diagnosis of SARS-CoV-2 and the virus that caused COVID-19. In addition to improving linkage to care, this point-of-care technology can save costs and offer a set of diagnostic options that were once unimaginable. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the satellite session. My name is Alex Costa, and I work for the HIV section at UNICEF headquarters in New York, where I lead the diagnostics work. The big picture perspective of multi-disease diagnostics is that it shows a significant impact on three levels, technology and innovations, clinical care, and health system strengthening. The technology used for multi-disease diagnostics offers the opportunity to test for several diseases but it can also improve the level of preparedness for outbreaks such as COVID-19. This is the stage for presentations by our guests today. We're going to start with Aaron Mdolo from UNICEF Malawi, followed by our colleagues in the Ministry of Health in Malawi, Brown Chimwandila and Dr. Kusani Mbendera. And we're gonna close with remarks by UNITAID given by Smilka Delusini. The information they're going to present here is based on a multi-partner project that has been funded by UNITAID and implemented by CHAI, ASLM, EGPEF, and UNICEF. I hope you enjoy it. Accessing diagnostics uh, services in Malawi has been a challenge for a long time. A long turnaround time, poor sample transportation system, these have been around for a very long time. Turnaround time can go up to over one month, which is not good. Timely testing and clinical decision is very, very critical to ensure good patient outcomes, not only for HIV, but even other diseases such as TB, HPV, and viral hepatitis. The coming in of uh, multiplex disease testing equipment is very timely because it has helped us to fasten the diagnosis of these diseases. And the coming in of this technology was not only the technological part, but it meant uh, different disease-specific programs come together to talk and collaborate. This is the task at hand. Working together, we have demonstrated that uh, when all these diseases are tested using the same equipment, there's no negative impact to any of these programs. 
Uh, with me here are two colleagues from the Ministry of Health who wants to share our experience on how this worked in Malawi. The HIV treatment program in the Ministry of Health in Malawi uh, for uh, some time in the recent years was dogged by a serious, a serious challenge in its elephant diagnosis program, which was a long turnaround time of results. Remember, EAD is very crucial. Elephant diagnosis is very crucial because if you don't take action timely on kids that are born with HIV or maybe that get infected quite early, you are likely to lose up to 30% of them before their first obesity and up to 50% of them before their second obesity. So it was really uh, that big problem to have uh, results only getting back after so many months until we uh, took a pilot, which was to integrate uh, EID testing and uh, viral testing as well on our GeneXpert platforms. So integrating TB testing, uh, which is already happening on GeneXpert with uh, HIV samples, uh, well, that's namely EID and uh, viral load. We saw a significant improvement in TAT with the, uh, the integration pilot. And uh, even in data, we saw a 24% 20, jump in the pediatric enrollments of kids that are, that are studying HIV treatment with a, a positive DNA PCR test result. The improvement was quite remarkable with uh, the integration model. And we've moved on to even accommodate uh, a lot more samples, so viral load for HIV and even HPV for diagnosis of cervical cancer is also starting to happen on our GeneXpert platforms. Moving forward, we look at the future of uh, serious cost savings efficient integration with use of the SmartPix technology called GeneXpert to test multiple uh, types of samples and uh, getting results to patients on time. As I was discussing diagnostic integration with Dr. Kuzani from the TB program in Malawi, uh, there are a number of considerations to prepare the health systems of a country to integrate diagnostics, such as human resources, supply chain, biosafety issues, and waste management but there is uh, not enough time to talk about all of them. A very important point to consider is to make sure the inclusion of other tests does not overwhelm the capacity of the equipment. Disease-specific departments must also discuss cost sharing and ownership of equipment to avoid any negative impact on the maintenance and repairs. In our case, the decision to integrate tests have put the equipment to good use and it did not impact at TB results. In addition, we estimated that the uh, multi-disease testing resulted in almost 20,000 US dollars of savings for the TB program. Usually, the same patient may need different disease services, and integrating tests is a solution which allows for a patient-centered approach. For example, when a woman comes with a, an HIV exposed child for EID, in addition to checking the uh, HIV viral load, she can also be screened for TB and HPV. Because cervical cancer is the latest test integrated, I would like to finish giving you some numbers. By March this year, we had done 2,500 HPV tests, which were not easily available for patients before. These are important results, only possible by our disease testing effort. Thank you. Ndi makala ninka wantawi ndi ntawi ndi bonde na honda kwa mbili Fujo uri mwe wanga nani sana hivu wa mereze jintujo Ndinezi wandili ndi zaka leivini Kwa mbili ndi mwona nkali ndi matila mwe wanga Ndi randi lopungu ndi luna zoni si matila mwe wanga ndi jambi ya mwe wina Ndinea mwona nga ndi tapeze ka HIV positivi Ndi tawawuza na usona pito kwa ezeza iwana tapeze ka negativi Kumano chilimbiki soja wa mangu ndiri mbiki soriwe uzimu wa mangu wala mandu ndomeko mena kuzira kushipata. Tema nga onina mpa kurumpa lumpa kumana ndi kazi kabasi. Kuri niyo tema nusa tamange nditu umenu ndi mwe uwe nilera. 
kuri ntimano kalota manga mwana yesu akoza kuya muyajani akoza kuya muyakajirombo ndivosi akoza kuya muyankaka oyipa kenda kuntima ngana amba kala basi nadza kuri andi chitiza chene lera kwaje kenda bula kujipata kuno kondipa chama nkwala ineyo ndikungolimbikitsa so azima yena amene sana pite poku chipata ndi kukaize chama gazi kuti akuyenera kutenga mbali kukaize chama gazi ndikuziwa za nthupi mawo ataye mbekezera kuti akapeze kuti HIV positive ayambe ku mankwala kuti amuteteze mwana amene akumuyembekezera kumaso yo akhalwa muyo wa tanzi muyo sadula dwani muyo wa utali Ndi mabangira zona kutiana mmalawi azakhala tsokulola bwino ngari mwina kuma mwetsa bwino mankhwala sholinga azakhala ndi moyo watazi wa urali bwino kumaso azakhala ongodziletsa opewa There are over 1 million people living with HIV in Malawi we have a prevalence rate of 131 per 100,000 for TB and an incident rate of 73 per 100,000 for cervical cancer and our data shows that 70% of patients with cervical cancer have perished. Note that almost all of cervical cancer death can be avoided when timely screening is available to all. We know now that we don't have to design our national response to control these diseases separately. And this is the biggest learning of all. For instance, at the same point, an infant exposed to HIV will be tested for EID an older man with TB symptoms would be tested for MDR, TB. A woman would be tested for HPV. And anyone with flu-like symptoms would, could be tested for COVID-19. And the results are delivered immediately. A joint and interdependent national plan with mad disease testing is possible. We can pull funds together to keep diagnostic services available when priorities change. And we have seen that with COVID-19. It is not simple, but it can be done. As my colleagues from MOH mentioned, with these innovations, we were able to reduce costs and use our diagnostic capacity optimally. This means we service more communities, have better data, and can advance the Malawi health systems in the global health agenda. The significance of strong and functional diagnostic networks has over the years been proven to be critical for any disease response. We all remember in the tuberculosis response how important it was to introduce molecular testing. In the HIV, we shifted from using clinical symptoms and immunological status of a person to actually measure the viral load in the blood uh, using molecular diagnostics in order to assess whether the treatment actually works. And today, in the context of the health emergency response, um, everything that we have been investing for years in building those systems have already actually helped us to effectively respond to COVID-19, especially in Africa. The technology evolution itself has also been incredible. Today, we can use the same platform or a device to actually test for different diseases. And this both at the central level or in the decentralized way, for example, in a district hospital, which means that we can organize the system as such to respond to the individual needs of a person who actually faces issues and faces different diseases. As UNITED, we have been incredibly proud to collaborate with the government Malawi in generating the evidence on, on, on these innovation together with UNICEF and, and CHAI especially because um, the evidence coming from Malawi has actually informed global discussions around political considerations or funding considerations and especially technical consideration of what integration actually means, how it can be done and to what extent it is beneficial and feasible for a response to any disease. Today, especially in the COVID-19 times, uh, we as United remain committed to uh, pursue the integration principle. And it has been, as I said, at the forefront of the COVID response. Um, and we need to support the scale up of integration approaches. And I believe that many lessons learned will again come from Malawi, who continues to be our partner on this journey.